for trying to solve a problem from a hundred years ago. Originally we just had pipes go into the river, we put our sewage and our stormwater in. Polluted stormwater runoff is a problem because cities and counties and developers didn't think about it when we first started building our cities. Existing infrastructure that we have today was uh, built with the idea in mind of getting water as quickly as possible out of our, our roads and into our waterways. But when you think about a fire hose on dry ground, it just scours the ground, it collects everything around it, and takes with it all of the pollutants in one fell swoop. That can really impact your fish population and the, the general health of that creek. And so anything, you know, things that you can do t to uh, target those in these urban areas can have a, a pretty profound positive improvement on their water bodies. It does rain here in eastern Washington, and even though it's not raining, it doesn't mean that the pollution is not accumulating. It's actually more concentrated when it does rain. Uh, that pollution runs off and uh, gets into our local streams, and, uh, and that can be a problem. But now we realize that it's a problem. We realize where polluted runoff is going. When you develop without stormwater treatment and without thinking about your, how you're going to address your stormwater runoff, you get pollution going directly into the lake. We can fix that, but because it's already built, that requires fixing it through retrofits, and green retrofits is a good option. Every drop of water has an opportunity to be treated before it leaves the site. That's the goal. Every time we do a project, we want to manage that stormwater. We want the cleaner river, and that was our goal. That was our motto from our integrated plan was cleaner river faster. We're limited on what we can do without receiving the state funding. The local governments, the state, environmental organizations came together and developed a financial assistance program because we knew that local government alone wouldn't be able to fund the changes. And really the changes that are going to occur are going to benefit all the citizens of the state. At Washington Environmental Council, we work with local cities and local counties to make sure they're getting the funding they need to truly tackle these big retrofit projects and we can do that using green approaches. We can do that using natural elements like rocks, like soil, like plants. Stormwater's been managed in the natural area for millennia, and so when we try and mimic that, then we do a better job of managing our stormwater. We did planter boxes that we put stormwater into. It's very successful in removing stormwater. It's like a toolbox. You need to have multiple solutions for the different problems you run into, and especially when you're talking about retrofit. Here at the, at the Neal Public Library, here in, in the city of Pullman, we have a traditional parking lot that has no stormwater flow control or treatment associated with it. With this funding program that was provided by the state, we saw an opportunity to go ahead and provide that treatment and flow control and not just satisfy the pollution concern here at the library, but also serve as a demonstration for, for other folks around town. Here on this walkway, we're actually gonna try a product uh, that was developed here in Pullman, actually, at WSU, Go Cougs. And uh, the water actually goes through the brick itself. That's where the vehicles come, they sit, they drip, all those vehicle fluids. This is gonna be the last stop shop for all pollutants, and after this point, the water will discharge to the uh, South Fork Palouse River and be much cleaner than it is discharging today. We as a city, we installed our first rain garden in like 2001. So we went ahead and said, well, why don't we try to assign people these rain gardens to adopt them? We call them stewards. And this is going to come down tonight with, with our daughter and we're going to go for a walk and have a beer at a brewery. And it might be a brewery that's right in front of one of our projects. All the water running down the road from Magnolia will collect into this little run off spot here and then it'll run into the plants, it'll feed the plants and the greenery kind of cr creates like a natural uh, filter for water. Everyone loves our rain gardens. It makes the streets a little more green, not a concrete jungle, adds a little more uh, softness and walkability to the area. This really is a, a, a smarter, more sustainable approach to stormwater infrastructure in an urban area. Um, it's, it's much simpler to manage and maintain. I would say there's a lot of bang for your buck for stormwater treatment from looking at urban areas and retrofit situations. For the same dollar, we get an environmental benefit. We get a benefit of the safety of removing stormwater from our roads and we can provide a public amenity. 
Oh, the only reason we did this project is because we got grant funding. If we hadn't have gotten grant, grant funding, we would not have managed that stormwater. The water that we send that, that goes into the river here, we're sending down to the, the kids that are playing in the, in the river down in Albion, uh, down in Colfax, and down, down on the Columbia River and on, on down. So, so we have that responsibility as a watershed neighbor. Cities and counties can't do this work on their own. They need bigger funding matches to do this work. This work that cleans up our drinking water, that restores our rivers and our streams and our lakes, and that provides a healthy habitat, healthy community for all of us.